All right, guys. The attendance was 18,358. It was a sellout. $6.06 million gate. The performance of the night went to Masvidal, Nunez, Jan, and Yadong. They all won $50,000. Congratulations. Who's got the first question? Dana, quick on uh, Ben Askren. Have you gotten any medical Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I should have jumped into that, too. Uh, he's good. All of his stuff came back negative, so he's okay. Cool. I'm sure he's not okay, but he's, you know, not. <laughs> good enough. Yeah, exactly. No question. Listen, before we get to the night's fights, there was one uh, outside the cage. There was a lot of commotion uh, before Gilbert Melendez's fight, Nate Diaz out there in the crowd. Do you know exactly what happened? We, we couldn't see exactly from yeah, where we were. They got into a fight, Khabib and, and, and Diaz, talking shit to each other back and forth, and everybody, you know, broke it up. We moved Diaz, and then Diaz left after the Melendez fight. Just verbal, or was there physical verbal, at all? No, verbal. Okay, fair enough. They appreciate that. It, everybody got it before it became anything other than verbal. Cool. Let's get your thoughts on the main event. I mean, uh, maybe not the rousing finish you wanted, but another another win for John Jones. I mean, what did, what, what did you think about the fight itself? Yeah, listen, in a night where there's record-breaking knockouts, you know, knocking out people that have never been knocked out in MMA before and, and things like that, you know, I think the fans have that, you know, you know how it is. The fans want to see all the, the crazy shit. But when you have two guys with everything on the line, it, when one of the most coveted titles in the sport, the light heavyweight title has been one of the most important titles in the sport forever. These guys are fighting a hard fight, busting each other up. Um, you know, it's not the most popular way to win, but he won the fight. It's a fight that you openly said you had wanted to see, and then you get this close result, you know, split decision. Is it a fight you want to see again? No. I, I had John Jones winning that thing easily. When I heard it was a split decision, I was like, what the? That's nuts. So, yeah, I, I, he, he won the fight. The thing you got to understand, too, is when, when, when you're somebody like John who, you know, he's fought all, name the names in the light heavyweight division. He's fought them all. He's beat them all. He's had, we'll call it a hard life outside the octagon. And he continue. He comes back and continues to beat guys the way that he beat DC. Um, you know, he beat Smith. You know, he, he just wins this fight against a, a very tough, durable, strong, powerful guy who came to win. Um, it's a win, man. And these guys now that he's starting to face are younger than him. Have been have been have been kinder kinder to themselves outside the octagon than he has been. You know, th this is the this is now in this stage of his career is what's really going to define him as as the greatest. I want to ask you about Amanda Nunes, another incredible performance by her tonight. Uh, you know, the, the storyline kind of coming in was this is the last big star that she needed to beat, right? So she she wins that way. Where do you go with her? I mean, is there anybody that that makes sense for her to fight at one thirty five, one forty five? What's next for her? What does this remind you of? Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, John Jones, you know, that's the, that's where she's at now. Um, you know, she wants the Cyborg rematch, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're down to make the Cyborg rematch. So, um, you know, Cyborg always thinks that I'm being whatever to her, whatever. I'm not. I, I, if Cyborg, I don't blame Cyborg for not wanting this fight. I don't blame her. I'm not trying to say anything about her. If she doesn't want it, that's fine. There's always somebody else. You know, she's got both belts, and she's willing to defend them both, and she's healthy. You know, you hear these people. It's like you guys were asking me a million times leading into the Cejudo fight and other fights that we've done this with, you know, ah, what, what, what if they have both belts, they can't defend them, and I'll go in and I'll say they got to give up one belt. We gave them the opportunity. We thought they could do it. This woman, so even when you look at Cejudo, and again, he'll be fucking calling me in 20 minutes bitching at me about this one, but, you know, it's like... So Hudo fought up a higher weight class. And, and, I mean, I told you guys that night, what he did in that second round, what he came back from was unbelievable. And I'm like, I'm going to give it. But he got hurt in that fight. He's out now. He fought a big, strong kid, and now he's hurt. She's not hurt. You know what I mean? She's fighting all the best in the world, destroying them, and she's not hurt. She can I just saw her skipping down the... You know, the hallway in the background when I was walking here. She's like in the best mood. You know, this woman 
is tough, man. She's unbelievable. Pound for pound, one of the greatest of all time. So, but there will be somebody next. If Cyborg doesn't want the fight, then there's somebody next. Daniel, the last one I wanted to ask you about was Diego Sanchez. A lot of that fight took place right in front of you. Uh, the corner work took place right in front of you. I just wonder kind of what your thoughts are on, on what happened with Diego tonight and, and on his future. I mean, I know you've always had a soft spot for him. but no, I love Diego Sanchez. I love everything about Diego Sanchez. And, you know, that kid is – when you talk about somebody who was put on this earth to fight, it's what this kid was born to do. He loves it so much. And, uh, and you saw it tonight – the way that he was treated by the fans. The fans love this guy. And he fought, you know, Kiesa's going to be scary at that weight, man. He was huge, huge. And every time Diego tried to grapple with him, he couldn't. You know, he was overpowered. And uh, Kiesa fought a good fight. Diego's, I, you know, like 14 years, 15 years, this guy's been in the UFC. It's amazing. Listen, he, he's, he's not getting, you know, it's not like he got viciously knocked out. You know what I mean? Like, I'll give you an example. Like, I think Luke Rockhold should talk about hanging it up. You know, he broke his jaw tonight. So that's the second broken jaw. He's been knocked out viciously a few times here. Shin is all banged up. He had to have uh, uh, skin graft and all kinds of stuff. It's just He's had a good career. He's been a great fighter. I'd like to I'd like to see him hang it up. And he's got another he's got another career that he's actually doing well at. It's not like he's like everybody's a fucking model, right? I'm a model, I'm a model. That guy's actually really modeling for Ralph Lauren, so um good for him. Dana, getting back to uh Diego Sanchez, uh before the fight, he made it sound like he really needed to have a really good showing because he was at the end of his deal. You guys plan on keeping – I mean, you just said that you like having him around. You guys obviously plan on keeping him around or – Yeah. Uh, how old is Diego now? I don't even know. I believe he's, what, 37, 37. I think? 37. Yeah. yeah I, this is one of those conversations where, you know, Diego's not getting viciously knocked out and everything else, but fighting is a young man's game. It's, it's for young people, man. It's Once you start to get older – you know, Father Time is undefeated. He kicks all of our asses, and, and, you know, especially professional athletes. I care about the kid. I love the kid. So, you know, we, we need to have a serious conversation about what's next. And he doesn't have to have a great performance because it's the end of it. Diego Sanchez has helped build this, this sport, you know, just as much as any. He's one of the, one of the, the, the Ultimate Fighter One guys, which... You know how I feel about all those guys. So um, he's in no f risk or fear of anything. You know, I would I would do anything for Diego. So and and, and uh, Holly Holm, as far as her losing this time, is it going to be harder for her to get another championship opportunity? What does what does it do for her because the fight went that way? Um. Yeah. It, it, listen, I I don't want to start f going retirement crazy in here, but. Uh, you know, she's had an amazing career. She is one of the sweetest human beings you can ever meet. And if you follow her on Instagram, she trains like a beast. You know, she's almost 40 years old and she's in, in ridiculous shape. The things that this woman can do physically with like the rings and, you know, gymnastics and, uh, and all that stuff is phenomenal. She's an incredible athlete. She's an incredible human being. Um... I don't know. I, I think that she needs to take a look at, you know, what's next for her and, and, and what she thinks. I just, and I'm just saying that because I care about her. I care about her as a person. She, she's amazing. So, I don't know. It's something, something we should probably talk about. Thanks, Dana. Yep. Dana, you said uh, about Diego, he was a guy put on this earth to fight. That's what he's born to do. I think it was another guy that, that same way, Jorge Masvidal. What was your uh, take on what he did? Yeah, that, that dude's a killer, man. He, he is, uh, <laughs> what a brilliant, what a brilliant plan, execution. I mean, everything of that flying knee was, was, was brilliant. If, if you're going into a fight with Ben Askren, you can 99.9% .9 predict that he's going to try to take you down right out the gate. And that's, 
That's what he thought. He set up the flying knee perfectly. He landed it perfectly, and uh, it, it was super impressive. Do you think he, uh, given the way he's won these last couple of fights, he deserves the title shot against Usman? <laughs> First of all, Usman isn't even healthy right now. This guy's still, I don't, I don't know when he's going to be cleared to fight. When he gets into camp, how, how does his training camp start going once he starts from? So I, I can't even talk about who's next with all that stuff. If Askren won tonight, it'd be what do you think of Askren? Is he next? Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. When you look at Masvidal, I mean, he's a guy that struggled kind of when he first came to the UFC, lost more than he won for a, a period of time, and, and now he looks so dominant and so strong, and he's such a great talker. I mean, he seems to be a guy that if you get him a title shot, he could, you know, really become a star for you. Uh, how do you have you ever seen a guy kind of have that kind of mid-career turnaround like he's had, where struggling and now all of a sudden becomes such a big factor? So what's weird is with, with Masvidal is when I first saw Masvidal. I said, man, this guy is so talented. But it was almost like his head wasn't really into it. It's not until recently that this guy started getting serious about fighting. And when he did, holy shit. Yeah, it's impressive. Was there anything that you know of? Like, did you have a conversation? Dude, you're not into this? Or no. Or was it just something he did on his own? Yeah, he just did it on his own. It all just started to turn around. Sure. And then uh, just one, one last thing. When you look at him, um, where he's at right now in his career, do you think he has another another level even to get to? I mean, just two fights ago, he lost to Wonder Boy, right? I mean, so it seems like he maybe even could get better than he is right now on the progression he's at. Yeah, I mean, that that's up to him. It depends on how serious he's taking it, how hard he's working and training. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, the guy, the guy obviously has the potential to be incredible. And... You know, he's, he's just, uh, he's unique. <laughs> he's unique. He's, that dude's a fighter. That guy is a guy that if he wasn't doing this for a living, he'd be doing this anyways, somewhere else, illegally probably. Dana, over here, to your right. Hi. Hi there. So John Jones had a very tactical fight tonight, and I think a lot of people expected him to be more aggressive. Do you think that he gets enough credit for being such an intelligent fighter? Um, like I said earlier, you know, th this is his style tonight is a very, not a very fan-friendly style, especially with the craziness that went on tonight. But yeah, at the end of the day, you have to respect the way he fought, the guy he fought, who is very powerful and has been undefeated since moving to this weight. Hits hard, um, but John kept pressing forward. He was the one moving forward all night, and uh, and uh, you know he fought a smart fight. He fought the fight that he needed to fight to to beat him. And, and finally, you mentioned Amanda Nunez uh, in, in a list of some of the greatest fighters of all times, not just as a, a great female fighter. Have you talked with her about giving her any kind of special or boosted uh, marketing push to get her out there and really sell her and not just her fights? Yeah, well, we do. I mean, we do that. We have a team that, you know, goes out and does tons of PR um, with these guys when they're not fighting and, and, and we've done that with her but with some people it, it, it just takes a little longer some people it you know it's funny saying it now but nobody cared about Chuck Liddell when Chuck Liddell it wasn't until he knocked out Tito that the whole thing blew up and went crazy with Chuck Liddell Anderson Silva I mean I, I remember having conversations with Ioli back in the day about how many times this guy won and you know the things that he was doing and he didn't really become a star. It, it doesn't, it, you know, then Ronda Rousey bursts onto the scene and becomes the biggest thing ever. Con Conor McGregor. Because it just, it's different with different people and takes different time. But let me tell you this. So tonight, the, the, there was almost 19,000 people here. We did a $6.06 .06 million gate. And when I tell you the numbers for this thing are all off the charts, I mean, the numbers tonight were massive for this event in every way. Even we did a fucking... 50-50 raffle, and the numbers are insane. They're like $100,000 with the 50-50 raffle, right? So all the numbers are big, and Amanda Nunes is the co-main event. She's a part of that. 
So, you know, when I, when I hear people talk about, oh, well, this one isn't a stock, that idiot. What's the idiot's name? What's the idiot? I'll give him more fucking PR here. What's his name? Ravel. Okay? Guy's out running 40-yard dashes and shit. This guy likes fucking attention, okay? This guy likes attention, and I'm going to give him more attention. You know, he says, uh, the worst thing that could have ever happened tonight is Amanda Nunes won. She's not a star for the UFC. So th this is the type of stupid shit that, that we hear. Amanda Nunes is a star. And if, if, I, I, I wouldn't say that b before tonight. Man, what is that? Are the planes landing here? This is crazy. The, so I, I wouldn't say tonight that everybody believed, like everybody believed that Amanda was, you know, the best and all this other stuff. But now it's you just get to a point where you can't deny anymore. Even if you're a hater and you're denying and, um, and so many people love Holly. They love Holly, you know, and uh, you can't deny anymore. Amanda Nunes is the shit. Dana, uh, last month you said you had a ground for the PIE in Mexico. Are there any chances that uh, for the Mexico event uh, in September you'll be breaking ground or having an event? Maybe. Or like yeah, maybe. I actually have a meeting this week. Those guys are going to walk me through everything that's going on with, you know, the land and um, what we're thinking and what's going to happen next. So you will be in Mexico this week? Mexico? Yeah. 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 This is crazy. Yeah. Has this been going on all night? Or just when I sat down. Any more questions? Uh, just one, one last. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you you're going to Uruguay with uh, Valentina uh, defending the belt. Are any chances to come back to Mexico anytime soon? Because it's been four years now. It's going to be five years next year. Not having a championship fight in Mexico City. I, I don't know. I, listen, I. When you go into these different markets, uh, you, you know. Again, I'll use Australia as a, as a perfect example. Look how long we've been doing fights in Australia. We finally built up that market to a point where it absolutely makes sense to, uh, to bring a title fight there. Especially there's an Australian who holds the belt and, uh, and, and a champion from New Zealand. So we'll, we'll see how that market plays out and we'll go from there. Dana, right over here. Hey. Um, I understand you said that Usman isn't healthy, but Colby Covington sees himself as a champion and has that fight against Robbie Lawler coming up. Regardless how, how that fight plays out, um, is Jorge Masvidal next in line for the title shot, though? No, nobody is. There's nobody in line right now. When, when Usman is healthy, when Usman is healthy and we know that he can fight, we'll figure out what's next. Thank you. Dana, hi, mate. How are you doing? Good, buddy. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, rather than moving it forwards, um, you've been to a lot of UFC events over your time, yeah? Yep. Pretty much all of them. Yep. Even in the crowd in the first couple. Right. Yeah. Is that one of the most dramatic nights you have ever witnessed in the history of the UFC? Yeah, it was awesome. I, I love when, when um, big cards that have a lot of hype behind them deliver. You know, and this one definitely had hype. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys felt it, but we felt it. This thing was tracking huge on pay-per-view, um, you know, and they just had the buzz and the energy behind it. And, and think about this. It had Francis and Ganyu and, Dos, uh, you know, Dos Santos on it, right? And then uh, uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley was on the card, and the card took a couple of hits and still just was such a stacked card. It... it uh, it was big. Well, I wanted to ask you yesterday at the press conference, but I didn't want to jinx it because of the jinxes in the last three years, if you recall, on this particular event with Amanda, with Max Holloway, with John Jones and so on. Right. Um, John Jones tonight, you haven't said it yet, but he could have taken the guy down. He yeah. went into Santos's backyard. He had the left hook cocked all night for the surprise knockout. Isn't Jones incredible that he wants to fight everyone else with their tools to prove how good he is. I, I wouldn't say that he, that he fought with, with his tools. You know, obviously Santos cracks. You know, he hits hard and he's a powerful guy. But John Jones does too. I mean, John Jones has those nasty spinning elbows. He throws elbows on the inside like their hands. Uh, he hits hard. He kicks hard. 
I mean, he knocked he knocked Cormier out with a head kick. Um, he's a very well-rounded guy too. And then finally on Amanda, do you think she's one of the greatest of all time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in answer to your question, if people aren't shaking with adrenaline tonight, they haven't watched the event properly. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. Thank you. You guys good with me? Yeah. Was Masvidal's knockout? The best the, oh, yeah. I, What's that? Who was it? Aldo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, listen, we could probably, if you, if you looked back and saw some of the knockouts that have happened, there's some nasty ones. But that one, not only how it landed, how he went down, but how many times he tried to get up and couldn't get up. And, yeah, that, that was vicious. And I bet if you talk to him, he remembers nothing about leaving the octagon or God knows when – when he starts remembering again, you know, things that he remembers after. It probably wasn't until he was in the ambulance or, or something like that. Yeah, that was one of the most vicious knockouts I've ever seen. Cool? Thank you guys so much. Have a good weekend.